Hi, welcome to this video session. In this video session, we'll be seeing a screencast demonstration wherein I'll be showing how to install and configure a CodeBlocks IDE so that you can uh, easily execute C or C++ projects within that. So let us see like what outcome has been planned for this video. The outcome planned for this video is that after the end of this session, the student will be able to install and configure CodeBlocks IDE on their machines. So let us see the process of how to install and configure CodeBlocks IDE. So the, for this purpose of this video, what I'll be doing is I'll be moving to a Chrome browser. I'll be properly pointing you all to a proper download version. We'll be downloading it and we'll then we'll see how to install it and after installing how to configure it so that we can run a small hello world save program in that. So we'll be seeing all these steps. Just follow my screencast in the uh, following steps ahead. So let me do one thing. So I'll be opening here a Chrome window. So I'll switch to a browser mode. And before I move to any browser mode, the best thing is to make sure that you have to find out what configurations are of what architecture your machine is. Accordingly, you will be choosing a proper code blocks installation file. So in order to find out and when we compare the configurations, the most important thing is to keep in your mind is my operating system a 32 bit or a 64 bit? So it is very important to identify whether it's a 32 or 64 bit. If you want to know what architecture or whether it's a 32 or 64 bit or of what operating system is installed on that, the easiest thing is to go to your uh, explorer and right click on this PC and click on properties. And once you click on property, it shows you a screen on which you can find out whether your uh, system type is 64 bit or a 32 bit. So here right now it is a 64 bit operating system the where I am hovering my mouse. So while downloading a code blocks, I have to take a very special clear that I am downloading a 64 bit version of that code blocks ID. So since now I know that it's a 64 bit operating system. Now I'll only download a 64 bit version of code blocks. So to search for a download of a code blocks ID, the best thing I would advise is to go, uh, go to google.com and just query a keyword called as code blocks it will directly take me to your site where i'll be able to download the code blocks id so when you if you get this screen the best thing is to click on code blocks the main link and once you are on that code block page what you'll be doing is you'll be clicking on the download menu structure click on download menu structure and once you are on the download page now you can download the proper code blocks version so you won't find anything on that. They just mentioned here the different instructions of what it is, of what type of download, nighty builds and all that. What we are more interested is we are interested in the side menu. Under this side menu, click on binaries, the one where I am moving my mouse. Click on this binaries. And when you click on this binaries, there are multiple files available for download. For us, the best thing or the best thing which we need for our code blocks practical out of the given list of uh, installation files available is to download a code block 712 the one which i'm highlighting so this is what we are more interested in using that this is no install type which uh, doesn't much depend on operating system to get executed so we'll be downloading this file so let me click on this and let me download this version so 17.12 ming w no setup dot zip so i'm clicking on the download it will take me to the sourcepost.net website from where I'll be able to download the file. And remember, this page will automatically initiate your download. And if it doesn't, uh, there's a way to download it by selecting a different mirror. You can see that it has automatically has uh, provided the file. So it has automatically initiated the download here. So, okay, so it takes its uh, download. So the download will take its own time. But for the sake of time, I have already downloaded that file. Once you extracted the, uh, once you extract that downloaded file, you will find a folder similar to this. For example, this is the downloaded and extracted version of the file which is currently being downloaded. So once you download this, you should make sure that uh, extract that and it will uh, extract the folder with a similar name, code block 17.12 ming w no setup once you have this rest all is easier what you need to do is just open this folder you will find the following files and you will also find a folder called as ming w which is the compiler which code blocks will be using to execute c programs 
So once you have this uh, set of files in code blocks extracted folder, you will click on a file with name code blocks and whose application his type is application. So once you click on that, it opens the code blocks ID. And so you should see this screen. So it displays the version and the type and all that. And this should be the front page when you open the code blocks ID. So once you have this, now what if we are we are supposed to do is directly create a C project. So we'll be creating a C project and we'll type a small hello world program. So go to file, click on new and click on <coughs> new project. Remember, uh, as of now, for the sake of simplicity, we'll create a new project for every a new C file. So I'll click on project here and I'll create a console application. Click on go and it lets me choose a language for which I want my code blocks to be used. As of now, I'm interested in C language, so I'm selecting C. Then I'll click on next and I'll type a uh, project title. Let us call the project title as hello world. You can choose a proper directory where you want to save, save your project. Just make sure this, this directory, the directory which you're choosing, you have all permission to read, write and search the directory. So I am right now, I'm sure that I have full permission to read, write this directory. So I'm just keeping this as a default thing and I'll click on next and select a compiler. So of this, from the uh, from this uh, large list of compilers, make sure you select a compiler, GNU GCC compiler. Once you select, keep all the settings default and click on finish. So once you click on finish, it creates a project with name hello world. And under that, under the folder sources, it creates a file main.c. This is a file where you can start your program. It by default puts some boilerplate template wherein you can write, uh, it by default comes with a hello world program. So let me do one thing, instead of hello world, let us call it as hello C. So I have changed it. Now I have this program and I want to run this program. To run this program, uh, what you need to do is you need to compile and then execute. Remember here what we do rather than clicking on compile, we would always click on build the project. The build the project will ensure that all the files under a projects, they get compiled. So I'll click on build. So it will by default compile the my main.c file here. So click on build and once you click on build, your output of your error or if your output of your compilation process, everything appears below. So I don't have any errors or warning. So this is a successful compilation. If I remove this semicolon and if I build it, you will now be able to see an error. So I have an error and it also points out where exactly the error occurs, what and all that. So just click on this line. It will directly take your cursor to the where the what compiler thinks probably the code is erroneous. So I'll put semicolon, I'll correct the code and I'll click on build. Should the shortcut is control F9. Okay, the, my pro project got successfully built. Now what I need to do is now I need to run. To run that, just click on run or the shortcut is control F10. Click on run, it runs and it displays the output which is the program is expected to produce. So just press a key so you'll exit the prompt and then you'll be back onto the IDEs. So this is how we install code blocks and this is how we also configure it. Now, sometimes what happens is I'm always interested in writing a code which is always indented. For example, I want to put a if loop here. For example, I'll declare some value int x is equal to zero and I want to see if x value is zero or not. So I'll put some code here. Some just a, some dummy statements I'm putting. Value of x is zero. So this code is obviously not indented and I want to indent it. Sometimes it is always better we uh, rely on some standard plugins which let, let us format the code quickly. So there is a quick uh, way to so configure auto code indentation. For that, what we need to do is we need to configure a shortcut for indenting. So what I'm doing is I'm going to setting tab, click on editor and on editor, just on this left side, just scroll down and find a menu or a section which talks about keyboard shortcuts. So this is your keyboard shortcut. Click on that. And once you click on that, expand this uh, plugins tree. And when you expand this plugins option, option tree, what you will find is you will find a menu called a source code formatter, the, the way where I am uh, uh, moving my mouse. Click on source code formatter. And right now it doesn't have any shortcut here. So what I'm doing, I'll assign a shortcut to it. So what I'll do, I have placed my cursor in this uh, new shortcut text field 
and I want control I to be a shortcut to format the code. So I have placed my cursor and I'll now press control I. What I did? I just press control I. Then it has assigned control I to my source code formatter to this. After clicking on add, then click on OK. So now you have clicked on OK. Now you can use that control I shortcut to edit the code all at once. So to now to edit this unedited code, what I'll do is I'll select all code control A and press control I. The moment I press control I, you can see that code is automatically edited. So this is a very handy uh, plugin and a shortcut which lets you format source code as and when required. So this is it for configuring the code blocks video and also how to uh, map a, key a keyboard shortcut to let us format the code in one single keystrokes. So let's go back to a slide. So what have we seen a quick, we have seen that we can download a code blocks and we have preferred. So whenever you're downloading a code blocks, what is more important is to identify the architecture of your machine, whether it's a 32 bit or a 64 bit. Once you identified whether it's a 64 or 32 bit, go to codeblocks.org, downloads, and under downloads, download a file which, uh, which is of uh, no install type. For example, you can just uh, go back to video screen where I was selecting the file. Once you download that, extract that file. There is no installation step. Just extract it and place the folder where you with a user account with your signed into operating system has a full permission to read, write and search the directory. Once you put that, open that folder and click on code blocks application. It will just open the code blocks editor there. So this, whatever you're downloading, it is pre-configured with MingW and all settings are pre in that. So rarely you need any further compiler settings to be done in the code blocks ID. And then we have also seen that there's a plugin called the source code formatter a style, which lets me format. We have also seen how to assign a keyboard shortcut control I to code formatter, which formats the code quickly on uh, pressing control I. So this is it for video. So I have included the actual site from where the code blocks file can be downloaded. It's a codeblocks.org. And uh, thank you for watching this video.